They got me feeling like I'm academics. Can't ride no way. Okay, here we go. So, uh, once again, it's, it's just a little rod lawsuit. Uh, pretty much most of the same stuff is there. Oh, actually, is this a front page? Where is the full thing? Oh, my bad. I had the full thing here, Chad. Give me a second. Is it this? Yeah, this is it. Sorry. Okay, sorry. So here's a lawsuit. And um, yeah, well, you're going to notice that there's one person missing. And the person missing. So all these people are being sued. Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Cuba Gooden Jr., Lucian Grange, Kristen Corum, Love Records, Motown Records, Universal Music Group, Combs Global, whatever, whatever. Uh, one person is actually missing from the lawsuit. And the person that's missing is actually... Uh, this person named Ethiopia and um, give me one second that I could, I want to kind of explain to you because people are, you know, they're doing this, this lady kind of wrong. They're saying like, she's cooperating, which by the way, if, if, if you're in the music industry, granted, if the government forces you to cooperate, you, you gotta do what you gotta do. But if you're cooperating with a fucking civil lawsuit, like, bro, you're done. Like, you know what I mean? Like your career is done. Which, that's not what she's doing, but I'll, I'll, I'll explain to you what's happening. Here we go. Is it this? Okay. Copy link. All right. So, they filed something in court, which is this. It's a notice of voluntary dismissal, which basically said, hey, the plaintiff, Rodney Jones, Little Rod, is going to give notice that the above caption action is voluntarily dismissed with prejudice against defendant Ethiopia Habertum Mariam. And the reason why they said, uh, I have another document that actually say what's going to happen. They said they did it because she's going to provide a, um, okay, actually I have it right here. I have that right here. Sorry. Right here. So this is a lawyer for Lil Rod. It says, hey, dear judge, I'm writing your honor with an update regarding the above reference matter on behalf of the plaintiff. On March 21st, the plaintiff entered an agreement with defendant Ethiopia under this agreement in exchange for a declaration that would be appended to the forthcoming amended complaint. The plaintiff has agreed to dismiss all claims against um, Ethiopia with prejudice. Furthermore, the plaintiff has elected to dismiss claims against Chalice Records, but they plan to keep suing just separately in um, uh, um, state court. The decision enables the plaintiff to refile in Los Angeles, exactly as I said. Um, also, there's been constant contact, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they're talking about how hard it is. Um, or they're saying defendant Sean Combs is like bullying people. That's what they're saying. So anyway. Okay. All right. Now, let me let me bring up this amended lawsuit and we're going to talk about some of the Where is it? Is this the amended one? Yeah. Cool. So this is the amended one. And we're going to this is where we find the information about Carisha, right? Okay. So here's the amended lawsuit. Uh, if you're talking about the declaration, the declaration should be an attached. Let me see. Attachment B. Attachment. Can we, can we just find the attachments? Attachment B, which is. Okay. This is a declaration of Ethiopia. So essentially, she wasn't into none of the freaky weird shit. So like her name being on this lawsuit, she probably just wanted to get her name off. She's like, yo, I'll give a declaration of exactly what jobs I did for all of these people that you're claiming did something to. I'll just tell you what my involvement was, which I never did nothing freaky and unsexual. I'll do that, but take me off of this fucking lawsuit. I guess they agreed, and this is her declaration. I, Ethiopia, declare according to this the following. I have personal knowledge of the facts um, um, set forth herein, which are known to me to be true and correct, and if called upon to testify, I could completely testify to these things. Okay? 
She says, I began my employment with Universal Music Publishing Group in January 2003. Around 2014, I got promoted to president of Urban Music and co-head of Creative at UMPG. Around 2014, I was given the president of Motown. Hold on, my bad. I, I can see. I can't see much. Uh, Motown Records and executive of vice president, uh, vice president of Capital Music Group. And I reported directly to Steve Barnett. In and around 2021, I became chairman of Motown Records, da, 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 Love Records. She says, in around 2022, I entered an agreement with Love Records, um, obtained the right to distribute one album being produced by them, the Love Album. I was, oh, they were aware, UMG was aware and authorized Motown to enter into this license agreement with Love Records. To the best of my recollection on the, the agreement, Motown Records agreed to pay or reimburse Love Records for certain invoice recording costs incurred by Love Records for the making of the Love album. Uh, I'm not personally aware of any financial sponsorship by Motown or UMG of any Love Records listening parties or writing camps. By the way, this is where they said the free coughs originated. So she's given the statement by, by saying, yo, hey, I work for this. I did work on this album or like we signed them for this album, but I wasn't into no freaky shit. To my knowledge, neither Motown Records nor UMG would have organized or ran any listening parties or writers camps. By the way, these, this is where Lil Rod claimed that the freak shit started for the Love album. OK, I am not personally aware of any cash payments made from Motown's or UMG to Love Records or Mr. Combs. Instead, as I said, to my best of my recollection, under the license agreement, Motown would have paid or reimbursed Love Records for only certain invoice recording costs. Since leaving Motown Records in 2022, I have no involvement with Love Records. She put it, she signed her name, and that's what, what it is, okay? We got the NDA from here as well. And okay, so let's let's actually go up and we're gonna find some new information. And by the way, there's also some text messages. I think they've now populated in here. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, I actually wrote down. I wrote down some time. Okay, I got the times. Or I wrote down the pages, I mean. So one amended um, thing that I didn't see before is this, okay? And this is where it, it basically terms um, Carisha Brownlee as exactly what she is, a fucking sex worker. I'm sorry to tell y'all, okay? I know y'all like to, you know, we could call them a singer, but clearly this is all cosplaying. When you're selling like 30 records, you're performing at Olive Garden. Like, you're not really making money off music. You get to realize that the money and the millions that you do have came from you sucking Diddy's dick. I'm sorry to say. And, again, this is an assumption, but still, this is the thoughts of only academics. All right? I got to say that not to get sued. Anyway, uh, this was added to the case. It says, upon information and beliefs that defendant Lucian Grange, in his capacity as CEO of UMG, authorized Motown and Universal Music Group to provide financial resources to defendants Sean Combs and Love Records through wire transfer to the defendants Sean Combs and Love Records, accountant Robert Greenhill. Upon information and belief, Ms. Greenhill ins ensured the wiring funds transfer and cash payments to sex workers were completed. Now, this is where he's alleging that, you know, these are actually, you know, um, um, sex workers that Diddy was paying. He says, defendant Christina Corum, through her direct reports, uh, Frankie Santella, uh, Moy Bond, and Brendan Paul, who we now see, right? See, Brendan Paul just got arrested, would negotiate the fees of the sex workers received and would ensure that the workers are paid in one of the manners detailed above. According to the plaintiff Jones, um, defendant Sean Combs brag about having several women on a monthly stipend. According to Plaintiff Jones, the women who receive these payments are Carisha Romika Brownlee, aka Young Miami, Jade Ramey, aka Jade, and Daphne Joy um, Cervantes Navarez. What the fuck is a long ass name? aka Daphne Joy. Uh, they were paid a monthly fee to work as Mr. Combs' sex workers. Based on the information and belief, they received payment via wire transfer. Now, this is actually a pretty interesting um, accusation here because, you know, 
without some type of proof or a recording of the of Diddy saying it, you see how whack was spinning. They're gonna be able to go to court or a prosecutor gotta think, well, yeah, Diddy was paying Carisha, but how do we know what part of the payment was for pussy? And how do we know what part of the payment was for um um for the podcast or maybe he hired her to do a show or maybe you know he was supplementing her record deal you know what i mean so it's gonna be hard to prove that if there was money transfer especially watch it's gonna be easy to prove if there were wire transfer because the bank's gonna give a history when subpoenaed but it's gonna be hard to prove if it was for sex work unless it's explicitly said that it was a sex work unless 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 you if you're the feds you need one of these people to turn, right? Look, it says Frankie Centella, Moy Bond, and Brendan Paul. They would negotiate the fees for the sex workers. If one of them turns and says, yes, Diddy did give me money to pay, pay his sex workers. It was my job to find a, a common ground of what I could get them paid. And I would take some money off the top. If one of those guys say that, Whoa, Diddy's in cuffs. So if Brendan Paul says that he was being paid to negotiate fees for sex workers for Diddy, that is something where Diddy would undoubtedly get indicted. That's the definition of sex trafficking. That's the definition of, you know, um, um, you know, it, again, that just shows a pattern of behavior, and we already have victims, right? Wow. During a 10-year preceding the filings of this action, all the, all defendants did cooperate jointly. Okay, cool, cool, cool. It's so interesting because I feel like this lawyer even took, uh, they looked at, they looked at the, r kelly criminal and they probably look at the r kelly civil cases and they wrote there's kind of just alike because they're bringing up even racketeering acts and shit these acts aren't charged and diddy hasn't gotten hit with anything but they're mentioning a particular type of act that would be only well it's, i guess you could you're being held liable for it uh in this civil proceeding but that's a term you would normally hear in a criminal proceeding, a racketeering. Like, holy shit. Let me see if I can find some more information. See, and by the way, this is why it fulfills that 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 sex trafficking thing I was saying. Through the relevant peers, defendants Sean Combs and Love Records use their financial resources and um, their general business partners to provide to solicit potential artists, creators, musicians, and producers and they did it and relied on mail, email, social media, text, WhatsApp to disseminate misleading information um, to profit from free label of, of these artists. In addition to, to being forced um, to work for free, they use their power and influence to force these creatives to solicit sex workers and engage in unwanted sexual encounters with sex workers. They also use power influence to purchase and distribute illegal firearms and drugs and as a general business partner of Sean Combs and blah, blah, in a... Um, different than Lucian Gr Charles Grange in his capacity of whatever, uh, they should be equally held liable for the commission of these acts. Wow. Okay. You see? Now they're, now they're detailing threats. Defendants Sean Combs, Love Records, Justin Combs, and Christine Coram didn't disclose to the individual they were solicited the fact that they will be drugged, required to sleep with sex workers, and forced to work for days at a time without compensation. As it relates to Plaintiff Jones, defendant Sean Combs, Love Records, and Christian Quorum controlled his ability to travel. See, that's another thing. You see, when we talk about sex trafficking, human trafficking, th that is like a um, textbook definition of what qualifies for sex trafficking and human trafficking. And under, even think about how they're looking at, and this is another country. Romania is investigating um, Tristan Tate and Andrew Tate for human trafficking. And one of the things that makes something human trafficking is if you limit their ability um, to travel. For example, you take their passport, you, 
you have people watching them, um, you you limit or remove their financing, finance, uh, financial capability of leaving. So limiting their ability to travel actually goes into kind of establishing that sex trafficking thing. They said they did not provide him with full compensation for the work he provided. As a result, he did not have the finances, as I said, to return home uh, without defending strong homes, love, records, and, and, and Christina Corum paying for it on several occasions in Miami. He asked him for permission to visit his family for their birthdays. He would say no. They went as far as threatening him by saying if he left, he would not be paid for work he had done, would not be allowed to return, and would not be uh, received the promised Grammy, expensive property, and participation in other projects. Wow. Okay, we read some of this. Remember, there's pictures here. Ooh, so now, so now they're talking about they're talking about Brendan Paul, which is the guy who got arrested. As part of this scheme, defendants require their artists, creators, musicians, and producers to visit strip clubs wearing whatever and solicit. Oh, they're saying that they would wear this hat, the bad boy hat. Wow. Mm. Wow. Talking about Rico here. Okay. Uh, the, the other part that I found interesting was uh, hold on. Duh, duh, duh. Okay. Let me go to, what is this? Oh, they're saying people are trying to bribe others to give information about this dude. Okay, here's a little bit more about Brendan Paul. So they're saying a part of this Rico, it says Stevie J, he's a recruiter. Comb solicits prostitutes, underage girls, and sex workers, and he would engage in free golfs. Brendan Paul works as Mr. Combs' mule. Wow acquires and distributes Mr. Combs' drugs and guns. Frankie Santella works alongside Brendan. While Brendan acquires and distributes his guns and, and drugs, Frankie carries the money and pays for the drugs and guns. Moy Bon hires sex worker, workers and participates in there. Wow. So we have a video of Mr. Combs, Stevie J, and the plaintiff at a strip club. Mr. Combs is recording the video while coaching and training Mr. Jones how to recruit sex workers. Wow, where is that video at? Holy shit. Now, th this is the part that you've probably seen online. He said, defending Christine, Christina Corham is the Ghislaine Maxwell to Sean Combs and um, Jeffrey Epstein. So they're saying that this is really the Carisha Maxwell, as we were speaking, this white lady here. They're saying, according to Mr. Jones, during the 13 months he lived and traveled with Mr. Combs, he witnessed, uh, according to Mr. Jones, according to the uh, during the 13 months he lived and traveled with Mr. Combs, he witnessed Mr. Combs display and distribute guns around his bedroom closets in Miami, Florida, and Los Angeles. Um questionable individuals dressed in all black. According to Mr. Jones, during 13 months he lived and traveled with the Combs, he witnessed defendant Corum openly order his assistant to keep Mr. Combs high off gummies and pills. They required all employees from the butler to the chef to walk around with a product pouch, blah, blah, blah. And then I think this is where... Da, da, da. Is this where they mentioned Young Miami? Hold on, I'll just go up here. I'm going to use the search function now because this is a lot. Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. Good. So it says, Brendan, Brendan and Christina brought the drugs. Plaintiff Combs, Rico Enterprise were rehearsing for something in the Water Festival in Virginia. Uh, Plaintiff Jones personally, personally witnessed. Mr. Combs do a few lines of coke in his dressing room. Defendant Sean Combs wanted to see, but Brendan forgot it. So defendant Christina Corum called Young Miami, 
who then brought it on the private jet from Miami. Packed, uh, this is packed cocaine in the car in his carry on luggage on the evening, uh, in the garage of on the evening of 11 3 2023. Defendant Combs and Giggs reunited in London, England for a sold out show. Okay. Hmm. Why is there so much videos of all this shit? This is the following the following is a screenshot of a video taken by Mr. Combs, taken on Mr. Combs' yacht. On or about December 25th, 2022, Brendan Paul is videotaped with one of the black pouches the defendant um Combs and Christina Corn required all the members of the Rico Enterprise to carry. The pouch was filled with ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, mushroom, and I guess this means Tusi. Wow. They do have pictures of this pink cocaine shit that they're saying they brought. And I'm going to be honest with you, again, maybe all this is just a huge stretch, but we do have to be, be, be you know, we got to hold some accountability for even like Young Miami. Young Miami's been making prostitute sex worker rap for the last three years. It's now listed in the document that you're a sex worker. Now, granted, you're not getting in trouble or probably not going to get in trouble, but Diddy's going to get in trouble for doing all of this shit. So when she eventually comes out, if she does give a statement and says, oh, no, I was never a sex worker. Like, you know, it's like a guy who's been rapping about killing everybody and anybody for the last 10 years. And then when they get to court, finally, on someone say, oh, we got you on, on, on charges of killing someone. You're like, I never killed nobody. What the hell? I was just rapping. Well, if we're to believe anything that young Miami says, she was rapping like a prostitute. And now it's being said that she was, you know, she was allegedly a sex worker. Am I saying that? No. Is that what the paper says? Absolutely. Okay. All right. Holy shit. Um, it's interesting because you know where I think Diddy is right now. Diddy. Uh, no, what is it? Uh, what am I looking up? I'm looking up R. Kelly. This is where I think Diddy is at in his life. I don't think he'll do an interview. I am surprised that you agreed to do it. Why are you sitting down with us today? I'm very tired of all of the uh, lies. I've been hearing things and, you know, and seeing things on the blogs. And, you know, I'm just I'm just tired. What are the lies that you're hearing that disturb you most? Oh, my God. Um, all of them. Um, that little girl's trapped in the basement, helicopters over my house, mm -hmm. uh, trying to um, rescue someone that doesn't need rescuing because they're not in my house, handcuffing people, starving people. I have a harem, uh, what you call it, a, um, a coat. Mm -hmm. I don't even really know what a coat is, but I know I don't have one, you know. Mm -hmm. Have you done anything that you regret? Have you done anything wrong? Lots of things wrong when it comes to women that I apologize, but I apologize in those relationships at the time I was in the relationships. Have okay. you broken any laws when it comes to women? Absolutely not. The six-part series interviewed 50 people, mm -hmm. family members, your former tour manager, numerous women. This was after, I believe, Surviving R. Kelly came out. Women who all claim that you abuse them. Yeah. Are you saying everybody in that documentary was not telling the truth about you? Everybody? If, if, if you really look at that documentary, which I'm sure you have, I have. everybody said something bad about me. Nobody said nothing good. Mm -hmm. They was describing Lucifer. I'm not Lucifer. I'm a man. I make mistakes, but I'm not a devil. And by no means am I a monster. I'm going to name the names. Andrea Kelly, your ex-wife. Kitty Jones. Mm -hmm. Lisa Van Allen. Lizette Martinez. Jerron DePace. Mm -hmm. Faith Rogers. Yeah. Asante McGee. You're saying everything they said in that documentary about you is not true. They are lying on me. Why would these women say the same thing about you, that you are controlling, that you are abusive, that you tell women when to eat, when to go to the bathroom, when they can sleep, where they can dress? Why would all these women tell these different stories about you if they were not true? And they don't know each other. That defies logic to me. Right, right. Until you hear the explanation. You can start a rumor on a guy like me or a celebrity just like that. All you have to do is push a button on your phone and say, so-and-so did this to me. R. Kelly did this to me. And if you get any traction from that, if, you, if you're able to write a book from that, if you're able to get a, a, a reality show, then any girl that I had a relationship in the past that I, it just didn't work out, 
she can come and say the same exact thing. Are you what do you what's your thoughts about that? Maybe it's just disgruntled chicks who, like, you know, again, if we hear the story about Cassie, Cassie went broke. Or Cassie, you know, went from living a life with Diddy, now it was it was fucking a trainer, starts dating him and marries to him. Yeah, she's happy, but financially she don't got nothing. So she gotta got she gotta go back in, you know, to the same ATM she's been fucking with, who's now not fucking with her. So she comes up with some allegations. That's what some people say. Are you blaming this on social media? I'm talking about the power of social media. In 2008, R. Kelly was found not guilty on 14 counts of child pornography after prosecutors in Chicago failed to convince a jury that he was a man seen in a sex tape with a girl as young as 13. What do you want to say to your fans? Last month, Kelly was indicted again, this time charged with aggravated criminal sexual abuse of four women, including three who the charges say were minors at the time. Have you ever had sex no. with anyone under the age of 17? No. Never? No. I have to tell you, it's so hard to believe that based on all that we've read. I'm going to tell you there's one you. I'm going to tell you something. said about you. What women said about me. What women, so nobody's allowed to be mad at me and be yeah. scorned and, and lie on me. Mm -hmm. So they're lying on you. That's your explanation. They're lying on you. Absolutely. 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 You feel that people have maligned your character? I have been assassinated. I have been buried alive. But I'm alive. So I think the point you're making is, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you have never held anybody against their will. I don't need to. That, Why would I? Well, I'm, How I'm, stupid would never held for R. Kelly, with all I've been through in my way, way past, to hold somebody, let alone four, five, six, fifty, you said. Why, how stupid would I be to do that? I didn't say you were holding... That's stupid, guys. I, I didn't is this camera on me? Yes. Oh, that's shit. That's stupid. What? Use your common sense. Don't forget the blogs. Forget how you feel about me. Hate me if you want to. Love me if you want. But just, this is Diddy, I think, man. Use your common sense. How stupid would it be for me to, with my crazy past and what I've been through, oh, right now I just think I need to be a monster and hold girls against their will, chain them up in my basement, and, and don't let them eat and don't let them out unless they need some shoes down the street from their uncle. Robert, Stop it. Y'all quit playing. Quit playing. Robert. I didn't do this stuff. This is not me, y'all. I'm fighting for my life. Mm. Y'all killing me with this. I got y'all 30 years. I'm a oh what would it be God. for me to, with my crazy past and what I've been through, oh, right now I just think I need to be a monster and hold girls against their will, chain them up in my basement, and, and don't let them eat and don't let them out unless they need some shoes down the street from their uncle. Robert, Stop it. Y'all quit playing. Quit playing. Robert. I didn't do this stuff. This is not me, y'all. I'm fighting for my life. Y'all killing me with this I got y'all 30 years of my career. Robert. 30 years of my career. Y'all trying to kill me. You're killing me, man. This is not about music. I'm trying to have a relationship with my kids, and I can't do it. Y'all just don't want to believe the truth. You don't want to believe it. At this point, we briefly pause the interview to give Kelly a moment. His publicist helped calm him down. I hope this camera keep going. No, we're gonna this let is the not true. Keep going. Hey, um. This is not, doesn't even make sense. Why would I hold all these women? Their mothers and fathers told me we're gonna destroy your career. But Kelly's emotions remained raw. It's real girls out there missing. It's real young girls out there being abducted, being raped, okay? They really are on chains. They really do have chains on their on their wrists, and they can't get out. Robert, and they're ending up buried in. Deep. Robert, we have to have a conversation. Really, I, I don't want you just ranting at the camera. Okay, I, think I came here for them to hear me okay, talk. But I need mean? help. What kind of help? This is the kind of help I need. Yes. What kind of help? I need somebody to help me not have a big heart because my heart is so big. People betray me, and I keep forgiving them. You sound like you're playing the victim here. You sound like R. Kelly. You do. When I listen to you, I'm just it telling the like truth. you're playing the victim. I'm card. just telling the truth. And the reason I'm emotional Robert, and I apologize you... for that no, no, is because no, this no. is the first time I was able to, to say speak. something. Yeah. I've said nothing. Well, we're also hearing from the family of a woman who lives with R. Kelly at his home. Oh. The parents of Joycelyn Savage say that the singer not only abused but brainwashed their daughter. R. Kelly denies that and claims it was Savage's father who gave his daughter to him at a concert. Then go looking for a Jocelyn Savage. I was doing my show. He brought her and asked a friend of mine to put her on the stage with R. Kelly. Make sure she's on the stage. Mm -hmm. But in a news conference this morning, the Savage family says they have no doubt that Joycelyn is being held by the singer against her.